the, uh, the topic is learning to be a global citizen. So why is it important to learn to be a global citizen? Well, a lot of what we do when we uh, have students come to us at university is to have them expand their awareness of what's going on around them locally, but also across the globe. And I think it's our responsibility as faculty to introduce them to the possibilities that exist in becoming engaged in the global world. And I have just had an incredible privilege to be part of making that happen. So I wanted to share all that with you. So I have to acknowledge Harvey Skinner. He's been our dean here for 10 years. He's completing his term as dean as of June 30th. And I think it's important for us to acknowledge the contribution, he, a significant contribution he's made to the faculty. He has been an exemplary leader with a lot of vision, um, a lot of vision about making change happen. And um, the one problem about being uh, working for a visionary is um, often you're the one that does the work to help make the vision happen. <laughs> so, you know, a lot, but that's okay. But, you know, early on in te 10 years ago, so let's say about a year or so into his term, he came out with this phrase. He said, as a faculty of health graduate, you are an agent of change. So those of us who worked around him said, OK, Harvey, what does that mean? <laughs> really? How can you have, after four years, how can you tell everybody who's graduating, walking across that stage, that they're an agent of change? What do you have to put in place in order to have them be change agents? It's all very well to say something, but you actually have to do it. So, why is it important to have agents of change? Well, in actual fact, this does come from his visionary perspective, that really we have to have a broader perspective on health, and that we are all living with diversity in our world, in our, the people we engage with, very definitely the students at this university. This is just an example of the diversity. I'd say, uh, my classrooms are such a phenomenal mix of diverse backgrounds in our students, much more so than ever before. And that's exciting. The other thing that's uh, happening is really our issues that we now experience, our health issues that we experience, are much more global than just local, right? right. Things like uh, Zika, Zika virus and Ebola and all those things, they don't just locate themselves in one part of the world. All our um, conditions, our illnesses, they, uh, they trans transfer across boundaries and they come into our own backyards. And the other thing about global health versus international health is we have to appreciate the fact that we ourselves in this country experience issues that are global. It's not about all of those issues happen in other parts of the globe and not in our backyard. We have as much of a problem, say for example, with our First Nations health or our poverty and homelessness in our own local communities as we do and we see uh, across the globe. So it's pretty important that our students um, appreciate that uh, being a change agent, making a difference in the area of health is an important um, skill and knowledge set that they should have as a graduate. I hope I'm um, pushing the point. <laughs> the other thing is we did have, um, as Mary said, I, we did have the, um, again, it was an incredible rewarding experience to work with my colleagues in the faculty to develop the new BABSC Global Health which is truly interdisciplinary. And it really also speaks to the fact that uh, we're trying to prepare graduates who do appreciate this sense of making a difference across the globe and not, but also locally, making a difference locally, but also in the world at large. Um, so the global health degree was another impetus for change. Um, and I think the other thing I'd like to just say is I have a, I have a feeling, I've been an educator for a very, very long time, I have a feeling that sometimes we um, have these students come into our universities and they're full of possibility. 
and full of potential. And they're just itching to make a difference. And sometimes we squash that. Sometimes we don't really give them the avenues to really like come alive and really express that potential and really make the difference that they want to, to be in the world. So, so back to Harvey. So Harvey tells us that he wants um, all of our, their graduates and health at the back there to be agents of change. So we say, okay, how, how are we going to do that? What does an agent of change look like, Harvey? So we decided that we would go to the students and we'd say, okay, if you were an agent of change, what would, it, what would you like to be? What would you need to know? So we, <clears throat> excuse me, we, t we asked them, what does it take to be an agent of change? We went to the students and we asked these questions. What would you need to know? What values would you hold? What you would get, be able to do? And what would you commit to? And this is what they came up with. They came up with an oath. And um, this oath, we are agents of change for health, transforming lives, communities, systems, and the world. They now say at every graduation ceremony, Harvey had them all stand up and they all repeat the oath, just like their medical students doing the Hippocratic Oath. They all stand up and they all recite this oath together to say that they're committing to going out into the world. Navita, that's right. You had to say it, right? Yeah. And making a difference. So what does it mean? Well, first off, they commit to these particular skills that they will understand health as a complex phenomenon that is defined, experienced, and understood in a myriad of ways and influenced by policies, systems, ways of being, and social conditions. That they will apply analytical as well as creative thinking skills to innovative approaches to problem posing and problem solving. That they will integrate knowledge and experiences from multiple perspectives in order to develop a systemic long-term view of health and they will utilize analytical, creative, and integrative ways of knowing to challenge conventional ways of thinking about health. They then also commit to the values of social responsibility that would be lived through community service and the values of diversity, equity, and respect of all people. Citizenship through a sense of community, both local and global. Continuous learning as individual, professional, and as a citizen of the world and collaborative ways of being in order to positively affect the health of people. In order to do this, um, they commit to facilitate learning about health through education and role modeling. They advocate for change where systems, policies, and actions compromise or prevent health, apply skills of leadership to co-create innovative visions for health and to mobilize change, and work together with individuals, groups, and communities to critique impediments for health. These are the things the students came up with. These are what we now call the attributes of knowing, being, and doing. And therefore, we created what we call the Agents of Change program. So these um, three components are what we put together as a model to um, support our Agents of Change. And here are our Agents of Change. And Here's the video. We believe health is a fundamental human right and should be an achievable goal for everyone. As graduates of the Faculty of Health, we believe that each one of us will contribute to that goal, whether that is through our direct work with individuals, groups, organizations, and communities. Our commitment to core values of social responsibility, citizenship, lifelong learning, respect, and courage make us unique. Our capacity to facilitate change through role modeling, educating, advocating, mobilizing, and leading is informed by both our disciplinary and interdisciplinary knowledge. We all are responsible for advancing the goal of health for all people. We will use our analytical skills, creative minds, and integrative thinking to make it a reality. We will rise to this call. We will have conviction, commitment, and courage. And through these efforts, both great and small, we will advance our goal. We are the Faculty of Health, and we are agents of change, transforming lives, communities, systems, and the world.
So how do, we, how do we take this model, this vision, that all these students have um, developed for us, and what is it that we want students to know, be, and do by graduation? How do we get there? So that's the next part of this discussion. So we, we feel that there are three component pieces of this Agents of Change program, as we call it a curricular version, a co-curricular, and an extracurricular component. So as I said, as a, an associate dean, I helped develop the global health degree. And this was an a, a opportunity to promote new ideas and new approaches and develop new skills that would uh, create these new global citizens. We also at the time were connected with uh, innovative funding opportunities from the provost's office to look at new pedagogies being introduced into the classroom. So the idea of experiential education and e-learning became really important components of what we we're doing at the university. Um, and in addition to that, there was a focus on how do we make the first year transition to university more um, acceptable, welcoming, and deal with the students who struggle. So all of those together helped me create this course, which I am so incredibly proud of, and I want to tell you all about. So it's called Agents of Change in a Global World, and it is about uh, looking at health as a fundamental human right, uh, allowing students to appreciate the fact that health can be viewed from a variety of different lenses, different complexities, and uh, we actually talk about complexity science and how we live in this complex world. And therefore, you have to be able to be um, accommodating within that environment. And most importantly, the very, very first week of the class, I get them to write me. Now, these are first year students, I should tell you. They're first year students. They've just came on, come on the campus. I ask them to write the very first week, two pages. Can one person make a difference? Can one person make a difference? Student, first, first year students, in my experience, the, writing that first essay is a huge hurdle for them to get over. So if you get them to do this the very first week, it's worth 5% of their grade. Two pages, just give me an opinion piece on whether one person can make a difference. So I think the majority of them were a bit taken aback, but they said, OK, fine. And they write me some extraordinary things. The course is blended which means that half of the classes are face-to-face -face per term and half of them are online. We have guest speakers come in who work in the field of global health or they do web webinars with those folks. Um, they have an opportunity to go out to visit community agencies. They do a lot of reflective learning um, and uh, a lot of group work. I'll show you a little bit more about that. Plus, Embedded in the course is a requirement for them to attend academic skills workshops to help them learn how to write, how to present, how to do critical thinking. And they have to document all this for me in a learning portfolio. This is a year-long course, and so I get a portfolio the end of <coughs> in, in December, and then I get another one in April. And that documents their journey through the course. So within the course, we uh, have them look at their own personal values. And they have to apply these three uh, components, those attributes of being a change agent, as they move through the, the, the course, and um, looking at how to make change happen. How do they develop these skills, this knowledge, and how do they become an agent of change? Um, in order to do that, there's a large focus on learning about themselves. So across the whole, hence the need to do the learning portfolio. They have to do um, some work on scholarly writing. They do a learning styles uh, skill test. They do a leadership uh, port um, quiz. They have to uh, learn to do presentations. And they have to do, learn how to do reflections on their own personal growth throughout the, the course. They also have to learn about the other. How do you work with people? And as we all know, you have to learn how to work in teams. You work with people in the real world, right? And so learning to work with people and appreciate that people have diverse opinions, and yet you have to sometimes come to consensus. So they have to, they're put in groups. They have to sign on to say that they commit to being part of this group. They have a charter. Uh, 
They have to learn how to work with the group throughout the entire year for purposes of projects and discussions. They also have to learn about communities. So they have to do a field visit. They have to learn how to be professional with an agency. How do you introduce yourself on email? Hey, you know, that's all they say. Hey, you. <laughs> no, that doesn't quite work when you're working with professional agencies. Um, but they have to learn how to be aware of the issues in the global community and how to make a difference. So these are some of the skills that are developed through the, through the year-long course. Uh, writing skills, how to look the, um, they're, they're built in, they're uh, not adjunct. They have to, they have to do these um, components of the course. And it also allows, like we know that everybody learns a little differently, right? Some students are really great at writing, some are really good at presentations, others can't stand the idea of standing in front of a class. Some are very good at um, art and creative ways of being as opposed to writing. So this, the way I've set it up, the evaluation is that um, there are different ways that each student can shine in their own way. So I'll show you a little bit about that. These are, at Christmas time, they have to present to me a health issue in an aesthetic format. So this one on the left hand side is about a baby being born into the world and he could be exposed to, uh, he's a product of his environment, okay? So he could be exposed to an unemployed, unemployment, the, um, or he could be, he's, he's, he's um, uh, influenced by the politics or the government or the environment in which he grows up in. The one on the right is a tree. It's a diorama that was created. And again, it looks how the tree could be flourishing on the one side or in a state of uh, disrepair, <laughs> death, dying tree on the right hand side, depending on which part of the environment he, he or she works in. So they're allowed to present, um, they have to define health and choose a health issue and present it in some aesthetic format. So I've got art, I have dioramas, I have poetry, I have spoken word pieces, I have videos. But it allows them to shine. And those who really like to do things that are creative is really quite ex exciting. So I'm going to go walk you through a couple of my group's learning examples. This, uh, this is the diorama, it's still in my office, um, about uh, poverty. And you'll see up above, there, that's actually this, the social safety net that's falling apart. And people are falling through the safety net. And this is um, someone sleeping within the garbage. And uh, his head is actually made of money, believe it or not. Uh, and it says, keep your coins, I want change. So this is a group they each have to decide what their names are. This one called themselves the 007 Agents of Change. They defined health as the determinants of health. They, that was the model that, that they aligned with as a group. And so their issue of interest was poverty and health inequity, hence the diorama. That's the aesthetic representation of that issue. They then, in, the, in January, they're asked to go out to visit a community agency that's looking at this issue. So this group went to visit with the Good Shepherd Ministry. And uh, then they have to look at who is an agent of change in the world who is addressing this issue. And in this case, the, the group chose Bill Gates. Um, and then they actually have to create a project that will make a difference by the time they graduate my course at the end of March. And so this group uh, created, organized a clothing drive that was then um, contributed back to the Good Shepherd Ministry. They have to present a poster in the very last class of what their project is and how it's, how it's going to be evaluated and sustained. So this is a copy of their poster that they created. A second group, they call themselves the Power Rangers. Um, their focus was on mental health and well-being. So their issue of interest was awareness of youth mental health issues. And this is the artwork that they created for me for the aesthetic representation of mental health. And their community visit was to Peach Youth Services at Jane Finch, where they had a chance to actually talk and with the youth at Peach, which was 
extraordinary for them. It really opened their eyes. And uh, their change agent that they chose to um, look into was Clara Hughes, who's, as you well know, an advocate of mental health issues. And their project of interest, they actually created an awareness of mental health services on campus. They established what they called the Minds of York U. Pretty cool. First year students. And these are some of the testimonials. And as you read those, I actually have to read you one of them that came in with the learning portfolio in April. So at the end of the course, they have to reflect back on that first paper that they wrote about can one person make a difference. So it's, I'm not sure which one, there's so many of them, they're incredible. For assignment number one, I'd written that yes, I believe one person is sufficient to make a difference. My belief was generated from a very optimistic and hopeful place. My belief was based on emotions rather than rational thinking. As this course comes to completion, I still believe that one person can make a difference, but this time my reasoning for it is different. I believe if a person is motivated, curious, and focused, they can draw on the right resources and right people to take action. This course has taught me a lot about what kind of person I need to become in order to embark on the journey that I aspire and to create the change I want to see. It really made me reflect on who I am and the world that I live in. Prior to the course, I had a general understanding of the various global issues which we also discussed in class, but I never understood the complexity of these issues. They're not as black and white as I thought. It's never really about one person being victimized or one person causing the pain, but it's a whole system. As I write this reflection, I can't help but reflect on Alexander Den Heger's quote, when a flower doesn't bloom, you fix the environment in which it grows, not the flower. I feel as though this whole course was just an extension of this amazing quote and how we as people can develop and further our knowledge to try and fix the environment. I've got four or five of these I could read out, but I don't have enough time. So that's the curricular component of the course, and I'm happy to talk a bit more about it because, as you can imagine, it's probably the most... Well, it, it's revitalized me as a teacher, let's put it that way. It's, I feel incredibly passionate about what the possibility of this course is. But we also have a co-curricular component of the Agents of Change program, which um, focuses on developing leadership skills within our student body by uh, on-campus training, work study students, research assistants, council leadership, and um, leadership around, particularly in my case, mental health and social support for peers. These are just a couple of pictures of some of our student leaders that um, are all quite extraordinary. You can see on this bottom one, it says agents of change, student success. And then the other really important component of our agents of change program is the extracurricular. So in this regard, we're talking about the opportunity for students outside of any kind of requirement to come up with a big idea, apply for some seed money to implement their big idea, get support from the student success team, and connect with community partners to have a positive impact on health and essentially bring something to uh, fruition, a socially innovative project. And some of the ones that came out of the course are perfect for this funding. So the Agents of Change projects, this is, they have to apply for, um, for this seed money. And um, the student success group work with them to learn some very, very important skills around budgeting, project management, to actually take this idea to uh, an eventuality. And um, these are just some of the skills that they get through this uh, project opportunity. And I want to show you a couple of our success stories. Uh, Jansen here um, set up the Autism Teenage Partnership. And I got an email from him yesterday to say he's being given the Ontario Order of Merit for volunteer, young volunteers. He'll receive his um, award from the Lieutenant General at the end of this month because of the amount of impact he's had on ter in terms of working with um, youth who are uh, autistic 
It's come out of his own work with his brother, and he's created this autism teenage partnership where teenagers come together and have a social environment to work, to, to be together in. On the right here, the Positivity Pass It On project is another one that I just love. It's so simple. See the bracelets? They're just those plastic bracelets, and on it says, Positivity Pass It On. And the idea is you have the bracelet, you go up to somebody you've never met before in the middle of the York campus to say something really nice to them, give them the bracelet, they then pass it on to the next person. So it's kind of like a pay it forward approach. And it's just a plastic bracelet, but it had a powerful impact when we were using it for our Let's Talk Day campaign last year. This year we have, um, these are just some of the ones that are being sp uh, supported. The Ascend Leadership Conference is a couple of the young guys who were in my course this year, and they are literally this month putting on a leadership conference for about 150 students. Uh, the re-gift cards project is, you know, those gift cards you have, you know, if you, these students are collecting them and then redistributing them. And the youth exercise project, there's a lot of uh, interest in our student body around trying to address um, the, uh, uh, the youth uh, in the Jane Finch area particularly, to look at trying to encourage them to be engaged in exercise activities. So this is another one that's being funded this year. So um, that's kind of where I'm at, but I'm, I'm gonna read you out one more email that I got. This, she says, this is, this is a student in my course this year. Last week you were mentioning you're giving a presentation about our Agents of Change class and what we've accomplished thus far. Not sure if this is something you'd like to include or not, but personally, a large initiative I've started this year, this is a first year student, was based a lot of off what we discussed at the beginnings of this course, and I thought it would be worth sharing with you. I decided to run my own conference, MedEx Toronto, for the first time this year. It took place yesterday and was an enormous success with over 150 delegates from universities all across Ontario. A particular aspect of this course, namely the discussions of complexity theory we had at the start, guided me through the planning process immensely. For example, many of the change makers we read about stated that because they had the passion and drive to make something happen, it felt as though things started to fall into place, almost as if others could sense their energy and wanted to be part of making this change. A very similar phenomenon occurred with me during the planning of the conference, and I was blown away by the accuracy of what I read in that book we had to read. I also utilized the concepts of setting simple rules and appreciative inquiry during the creation of MedEx, and they definitely paid off. I thought this was worth sharing with you. Thank you once again for providing me with this learning opportunity. So that's all I wanted to tell you. <laughs> but you can tell I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty pleased with the way this course has gone. I'm told it's unique. I'm told that um, you know, the skills that they learn are skills that they carry with them, not just about reading or writing essays. Um, and I do believe that that's the case. Um, but it has to be, I feel as privileged to be teaching it as, um, you know, seeing these young people in front of me just e explode with possibility, quite frankly. And, um, I, and it's just been a privilege.